Good morning to honorable judges, senior members, friends, and well wishes. Our respected honorable Judge Justice N. V. Ramana, Judge Supreme Court of India, honorable Mr. Justice Vinit Kothari, Judge Aikot of Madras, Shri K. K. Parasaran, Pidamagan of the Bar, honorable judges, present and past, respected seniors, dear friends. M. Ravindran, senior advocate, former. President Madras Bar Association. I welcome all to the webinar for offering condolences to the departed Honorable Dr. Justice, former Judge of the Supreme Court of India. The Honorable Judge was a second, was the Secretary of the Bar Association, prior to his elevation as a Judge of this Court. He has left an indelible mark in the Madras High Court. Kerala High Court, Andhra Pradesh High Court, Rajasthan High Court, and the Supreme Court. After his lordship served and also in the Law Commission of India, wherein he was the chairman with the numerous reports on important subjects. His lordship suddenly passed away on 26-8-2020 by cardiac arrest, unable to bear the loss of his beloved wife, Thirumadi Meenachi Achi, who passed away just 36 hours before him. He is fondly remembered by all the members of the bar, friends, relatives, and litigants all over the country. I Yes, yes. Am I supposed to speak? No, no, I have to finish it. I welcome all the members of the bar, former sitting judges and family members of the guest here, Aaron Lakshmans. Thank you all. Lord, may I request Honorable Justice N. V. Ramana, Judge Supreme Court of India, to address us. Can I start? I am audible. Yes, yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Senior Advocate R. Sankar Narayan, Additional Solicitor General of India, Mr. Vijay Narayan, Advocate General of Tamil Nadu, Law Officers of the High Court of Madras, Senior Advocate Mr. A. Al Sundareshan, President of the Bar Association, M. Bhaskar, Secretary of the Madras Bar Association, Advocates, Members of the Bar, Ladies and gentlemen, all the family members of Sri late A.R. Lakshmanan. It was a deep sense of sorrow that we have come to condole the passing away of Honorable Justice A.R. Lakshmanan, former judge of Supreme Court of India, and a towering personality in the Indian judiciary from Tamil Nadu state who left for heavenly abode on 27th August 2020 at his native place, Devakottai. He leaves behind him a legacy of qualities of a great jurist. Dr. Lakshmanan was born on 22nd March 1942 in Devakottai, Sivaganga district, Tamil Nadu. After successfully graduating in economics from saying Joseph's College, Trichy, he decided to pursue the law from Madras Law College. In the year 1966, after completing his bachelor law degree, he started his legal career by assisting some of the most prominent senior members of the Madras Bar. Justice Lakshman, being a first generation lawyer, himself admitted to struggling initially in order to survive in the profession. After practicing as a lawyer for over 23 years, as a result of his sheer hard work, 
He was appointed as a permanent judge of Madras High Court in the year 1990. Justice Lakshmanan excelled as a judge during his tenure in Kerala High Court. He was appointed as acting chief justice on three occasions. He became chief justice of Rajasthan High Court and thereafter he was transferred to chief justice of my parent High Court, that is Andhra Pradesh High Court. And from there he was elevated as judge of the Supreme Court in 2002. He served in the Supreme Court for five years and retired in 2007. During his tenure in Supreme Court, he contributed more than 200 judgments touching wide range issues, including that of taxation, management of religious institutions, service matters, labor laws, employers' welfare, family matters, many more. During his tenure in the Supreme Court, he was also part of several constitutional ventures. After his retirement, he was appointed as the chairman of the 18th Law Commission. And he has undertaken long journey from an advocate to a judge. He firmly believed that the justice delivery system needs to be improved. In the short span of two years, he reflected upon the entire state of affairs of the Indian legal system and the necessity of implementing changes. He submitted almost 32 comprehensive reports to the government of India, recommending various measures to improve the judicial system in this country. He contributed immensely to the development of family law jurisprudence through various reports during his tenure as a chairman. Throughout his life, he was a, he wore multiple hats. One such hat was that of an educationist. He was committed to the cause of improving quality of legal education in India. His endeavor was to enrich the young minds to pursue a profession of excellence and commitment. He was served as chancellor of National Law University of Jodhpur and Nalsar at Hyderabad, which were renowned centers of legal education in the country. As a testament to his knowledge and learning, he was authored several works in Tamil English. His books provide a deep insight into years of experience, his depth of knowledge and his unending wisdom. His life and times are bound to be remembered again and will certainly inspire generations to come. The greatest strength of the judiciary is the faith of the people in it. Faith, confidence, and acceptability cannot be commanded. They have to be earned. I believe Justice Lakshmanan optimized all the required qualities of being one of the most and best judges this country has seen. At this instance, I reminded to quote Thiruvallar, Vaitul Val Wang, Val Bhavan Van Viram, Thai Vaitul Vaikapadam. I need not explain the meaning of this Tamil quote, but life is an opportunity to be an example to others by setting exemplary standards, which he have followed. There are innumerable qualities that a person needs to live, what can be called a good life, humility, patience, kindness, and a strong work ethic, and the enthusiasm to constantly learn and improve oneself. Most importantly, particularly a judge, one must be steadfast in holding on to their principles and fearless in their decisions. It is an important quality of a judge to withstand all pressures and odds and to stand up bravely against all obstacles. Here I am reminded a few, few words of a saying who while speaking about the contemporary significance of Lord Rama, he said words, I quote, so people worship Rama, not because of the success in his life, but for the gracefulness with which he conducted the most difficult moments. That is what is valued. That is the highest value in one's life. This is not the question of how, how much you have, what you do it, 
what happened or what did not happen whatever happened how did you conduct yourself that is what determines the quality of who you are unquote our values are ultimately our greatest wealth and we must never forget the same justice lakshmanan wore his values on his sleeves and i learned immensely from him about being a person a good person and a judge justice lakshmanan was very close to my heart i had attended his 60th birthday celebrations in devakottai i will never forget his affection and concern towards me i must admit he was very he is the very good host one of the great qualities of justice lakshmanan was he never forgot his friends and companions like a true leader he always took care of everybody when i was a young judge we often attend informal meetings together it was during these times that he would very proudly share stories of ancient tamil heritage and traditions he was an individual who was very closely connected with his birthplace culture and language often with pride he used to recollect the rich tamil architecture and chettinadu culture and cuisine he was indeed a proud tamilian and had close connections with his grassroots before i end i would like to recollect some of the words lakshman himself which was a judge a judge must remember to and cherish i quote we the members of the judicial hierarchy have inherited the legacy of dedicated collective endeavor by the bench and the bar in establishing an unbroken tradition of high efficiency perfect integrity and fearless independence unquote we should all take inspiration from his words and should strive to commit a vibrant and independent judiciary which is required in the current times i feel that the biggest quality of a good human being is that we do not need to remember them and but they remain alive in our memories this is lakshmanan has left the world by making a mark in the lives of thousands of people and always remains to be there in our memory this is lakshmanan enjoyed abundance of goodwill and affection from every member of the bar and bench he truly believed that while sheer hard work and hard felt with humility you can achieve greatness his life is an inspiration for the young generations during these times on my behalf i express and place on record deep sense of gratitude for his partnership's contribution to the indian judiciary and extend my deepest condolences for the loss i would like to pay my tribute to mrs minakshi achai justice lakshman's loving wife she took up the responsibility for the well being of everyone in her joint family and was a loving and caring mother she will be remembered fondly by all her family and acquaintances i pay i respectful homage to the departed souls i pray to god to give strength and courage to the family members may their soul rest in peace with these words i am saying thanks nandri thank you malod for your wonderful thoughts with the doctor this is lecture man now may request honorable justice vinith kothari to address us thank you uh, honorable mr justice nv ramarna just supreme court of india and chairman of nalsa mr k parasaran senior advocate and former attorney general of india mr am ravindran senior advocate and former president of madras bar association mr arl sundreshan president of madras bar association mr am baskar secretary of madras bar association mr shankar narayan learned aig other members of family of honorable dr justice a lakshman and other dignitaries on the screen and in the audience only lucky souls get avatar on this earth in the persona and families like that of honorable dr justice a lakshman a former judge of supreme court of india who unfortunately left us all in his for his heavenly abode about 2 months ago on 26th august 2020 in quick succession of the demise of his wife tirumati minakshi achi on 24th august 
It was indeed an honor and my pleasure to know Honorable Dr. Justice A.R. Lakshmanan personally. During his days in Rajasthan, when his lordship was chief justice there, and I was a practicing lawyer at Jodhpur. His lordship's legal acumen and respectful disposition towards the lawyers in Rajasthan High Court was so famous as his lordships used to address most of the lawyers as sir. And the quick grasp of the matters and quick delivery of judgments was the hallmark of his lordship's tenure as chief justice of the Rajasthan High Court. And after serving as chief justice of three high courts, Rajasthan, Kerala, and Andhra Pradesh, his lordships adorned the chair of the highest court of the country, Supreme Court of India, for about five years. Thereafter, his lordships not only served as the chairman of Law Commission of India, where about 30 plus interim reports were submitted to the government of India for various reforms in the judicial system of our country, but also he has established National Law University at Jodhpur, being its founder chancellor, and later served as chairman of Coffee Posa Advisory Board and NSA Advisory Board. While in Madras, as a practicing lawyer, the popularity of Honorable Dr. Justice A.R. Lakshman can be caused by the fact that his lordship served as secretary of the Madras Bar Association for about four terms and left such a wonderful legacy that his son, Mr. A.R.L. Sundreshan, senior advocate, is now the president of same prestigious Madras Bar Association. His lordship's contribution, contribution to the Indian, to the Indian at the highest levels was voluminous and as many as around 1 lakh plus judgments are rendered in the various high courts and Supreme Court is a treasure true. His lordships also encouraged alternative dispute resolution methods, especially arbitration. And I was lucky and happy enough to request his lordships to impanel his lordships in the arbitration centers, both in Karnataka High Court and Madras High Court. And his lordships was kind and gracious enough to give his consent for the same. The combination of a great judge academician, great humane person, and a great host couple was another great attraction for anybody to fall in respectful love with Dr. Honorable Justice A.R. Lakshmana. I and my wife had the proud privilege to be his guest on some occasions, and on a couple of occasions, my family was lucky to host his lordships and Madam Minakshi Achi also. His lordships books are now the memories he has left for us and a rich combination of wealth of affection for all the family members and friends around. The vacuum created by the departure of most respected couple in the judicial fraternity of Tamil Nadu will be difficult to fill. And the only way we pay a rich tribute to the departed noble soul is to constantly follow the footsteps of the ideals practiced and displayed by the Honorable Dr. Justice A.R. Lakshman. His Lordship was just like father to me also and I also feel equally bereaved as his family members do today. I am grateful to the Metros Bar Association, particularly Mr. A.R.L. Sundreshan, President of the Bar Association, and Mr. Bhaskar, Secretary, to give this opportunity to be a part of second such webinar. In the first one, I had the honor to address in the company of the distinguished guests, and the present one in the eminent presence of Honorable Dr. Justice N.V. Navarna Sai. I thank the organizers for the same, and I pray Almighty to grant eternal peace to both the departed noble souls of Honorable Dr. Justice A.R. Lakshman and his wife, Tirumati Minakshi Achi, Om Shanti. Thank you. Mr. Paskar. Thank you, my lords, for sharing your wonderful thoughts as well as the experience with the book of A.R. Lakshman. Request uh, Pidamagan K. Parasan, Senior Advocate and the former Attorney General, to address us. I hope I am audible. I yes, hope sir. I am audible. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most respected and honored Mr. Justice, in me, Ravana Garu, Judge of the Supreme Court, the Honorable Dr. Justice, Inet Kothari, Honorable Judge of the Bedra High Court, Mr. Ravindram, the President, sir, and members, and the other office bearers and members the Madras Bar Association, the family members of Dr. Justice Lakshman, senior members of the board, my other colleagues in the profession, members of the legal fraternity, and those participating on the line. We are all today assembled under the cloud 
of a great grief and sorrow on the demise of Dr. Justice A.R. Lakshman. About him, the Honorable Justice Ravana Garu, who had been a judge of the Andhra Pradesh High Court, which is parent high court, where Justice Lakshman has been chief justice, and the Honorable Mr. Justice Kutari of the Raju Bedi had been the Rajasthan High Court, Justice A.R. Lakshman had been. The Chief Justice there has spoken their full heart with personal knowledge of their intimacy and love and the great qualities of Dr. Yar Dr. Jitya. My friendship and association with him was deep rooted. In fact, I know him from the day when he walked around the corners of the Madras High Court with his robes of a lawyer. He hailed from Devakote, which has a special significance for me personally, because my father, his siblings, his relations, his near and dear, his friends, and many of his clients, Nagaratars, hailed from Devakote. Almost every summer vacation, at least for a couple of weeks or more, my father used to visit Devakote, and I also used to be with him with our family at Deva Kote, because even if you stay there for 30 days, you will be able to dine only once with one of the relations or friends. And Deva Kote has a significance in the history of India and in the history of Tamil Nadu. During the Quit India movement, they were all aroused as citizens of India, and you could never have seen a town more patriotic, more nationalist, than Deva Kote. The agitation was such, the subordinate judge's court was burned down and still remembered as a monumental. The ashes of the court were left as a protest against a moral administration of justice by the British. The consequence was the entire citizens, occupants, and residents of Deva Kote had to pay a community penalty. And my father's brothers had to pay heavy amounts because. There were small, small owners of small houses. The number of Nagarthas paid heavy penalty. That was their court day. And it is a coincidence that Justice Lakshman was born in the year 1942. The Quit India movement agitation was in its peak, and then their court of court was burnt. After all, when grows up, a person grows up in a particular atmosphere, circumstances, tradition, and culture in his family. Lakshman was born in that year, in that city, with this background and culture. Certainly, as a child and as one grows up, he learns these things being narrated by elders, and he had gone deep into it. I say it with personal knowledge, because during a crucial time in the history of India, one day, he and I had to meet and discuss on a very important question, of which I do not want to be discussing or saying anything now. That was the background. And Nagarasar community is a very well knit community, well identified community, with their own values of customs and traditions. They, as far as possible, never carried their disputes to court. You see, all these things shape their justice, Lakshman as a human being. They always went to panchayatars or their own community chetiyas. You knew all their customs and used to negotiate and settle the matter within a couple of months, not dragging on for one arbitration I was involved, went on for 11 years. Not like this. Within two months, three months, one month, they settled the whole dispute. This was the tradition in which he was born. And Nagaratas were charitably disposed of, very philanthropic. And here was a certain amount, in fact, why they are one and nine rupee from their business for charities and for religious endowments to be endowed to all important temples. He was brought up in that tradition and in their values and in their system. So much so, their, their family was also involved. And he was a person who was deeply religious and a believer and a worshipper and used to visit the very important temples. And he serving as judge in several districts, gave an opportunity to visit all temples. But religion was something absolutely personal to him. He never brought it 
that he openly is uh, captured for his worship. He lived a life which is purely secular, following secular values, secular traditions, and bearing in mind that secularism is a basic feature of our constitution. This was the R. Lakshman. When he practiced the Madras High Court, he was the darling of the bar. And it's again a coincidence that the last case which I had argued when I had to leave Chennai, transplanting myself to Delhi as solicitor general, was before a judge of the lower subordinate judiciary at Thiruman Namarai, in which uh, I was assisted by Dr. E. R. Lakshman and the Justice S. Jagadishan, who was then a member of the board. And it's after that case, worshiping at Thiruman Namarai, I went to Sri Lanka, my birthplace, then came back to Chennai and proceeded to Delhi to take job. This was our friendship. But even though we were very close friends, we, I don't see became a judge. We maintained that distance, but never parted with that friend. Somebody of that intimacy, friend. And then he shifted to Delhi as a judge of the Supreme Court. His family had to be shifted. His wife was new to that atmosphere. Even before shifting to Delhi, but his noble wife and my wife were very close friends and used to be visiting each other. So when, she, when they shifted to Delhi, my wife guided her to take him to the relevant shops, important place which only required to go and come to all those places. And on two occasions, when my wife was not at Delhi, she phoned up to her daughter-in-law, my daughter-in-law, to guide her and take her to the shop. She went to try she took But off, the distance between the judge and his family and the lawyer and his family was absolute and critical. And as far as the C.A.R. Rakhman was concerned, though we were so close to each other, I met him on the day when he was sworn in as a judge of the Supreme Court to greet him. I met him on the day when he laid down his office after having been rejected. He accepted on one occasion when he had called me to his residence, an official residence. I went there. Then Justice Kabir was also in the house around with him. In fact, one of the division benches which stand for a long time as a combination of Jesse A. R. Rathman and Justice Kabir. And not only were he was the adorning of the Madras bar, he knew how to carry the bar with When he went to Kerala, when he went to Rajasthan, when he came to Supreme Court also, he carried the entire bar with him. That was the great quality of Dr. A. R. Rathman. Be present, smiling, very kind, very courteous but never allowed a lawyer to transgress his limits. He had a patient hearing, but he knew how gracefully and tactfully to cut off the argument when time was being unnecessary. This is about Dr. Yarl. There are many other things which one can say but about his legal career. Every one of us know how he functioned as a lawyer, how he functioned as a judge, how he functioned as a chairman of the law commission, and the other activities which he was involved. In fact, both of us have participated in several public functions, both at Chennai and at Delhi. And one of the functions which I never forget is a very odd function. The Madras discourse. They were celebrating after several years after they succeeded before the Supreme Court, in which the Supreme Court has they had held that heart racing is not gambling. And they were celebrating it after 10 or 12 years after the judgment. By the time Justice Edmund had retired, we both participated. I still vividly remember the exchange of presentations and jokes and humor at the time of that meeting. And then I was informed that a function is being held today for condolence. I felt so anguished that such a good friend of mine had. had Vanished from our midst, and that we had to attend the condolence meeting office to speak a few words about him. But then one has to reconcile myself, oneself, about events which are about which nobody has any control. The, I can only recall what is attributed to a great scientist, Einstein. He, he says everything is determined from the beginning and the end by forces over which we have no control. 
we all dance to the mysterious tune in turn in in tone in the distance by an invisible piper all live a life which has been the previous day by almighty this is an action live a life which is religious secular secular and spiritual he lived a life of how one should conduct himself as a gentleman he had compassion he belonged to a community of philanthropists he had the a like affection for the down trod he was always good to go to the help of those who are poor and down trod he maintained his social relationship even after he became a judge but at the same time he ensuring the distance between the judge and the others with whom he socializes in him there is a lost the betrothed bar and bench there is a bar to the legal fraternity and above all there is a personal loss the gentleman who had been not so successful but for a very affectionate and family attending wife with whom she was blessed to live and as at the opening it was said he could bear the grief of the separation of such a noble wife because probably if one calculates the time one has spent just as your husband might have spent more time with his eldest mistress Because morning you prepare the case, go to court, you come, you interact the clients in the evening. When do you spend your time with your family? Only during dinner if you have got some time and then you retire to bed. Therefore, you might have spent more time with the mistress of law than with his own beloved wife. So much so, at that age, to part with one, with whom one has lived such a long life, is so painful. And to part with one who has supported one, in his successful career is all the more painful. And as it was pointed out, 36 hours was too long a time for him to survey after his death. He followed after her and reached the heavens to live there along with her happy. May his soul rest in peace. I thank you for the opportunity which I had, but it is not an occasion that one can thank because it is more an occasion for grief and ventilate how you feel on an occasion like this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shri Kriya Parasaran, former Attorney General of India and Pridhamangan of Bar, for sharing wonderful thoughts of uh, Mr. Dr. Yair Lakshman, particularly calling uh, Dr. Yair Lakshman's darling of the Bar. Thank you. Now, may I request uh, Shri M. Ravindran, senior advocate and uh, former president of the Midas Bar Association to share his views. Not audible. No uh, audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. yes Most respected, honorable Mr. Justice Ramana Garo, Judge Supreme Court of India, Honorable Dr. Justice Vinit Kothari, Judge Mata Sai Court, most revered and my esteemed senior, C. Parasaran, Mr. Sundaresan, President of the Bar Association, Mr. Bhaskar, Secretary of the Bar Association, friends. We are assembled to mourn the sudden and unexpected demise of one of the greatest judges of the Supreme Court of India, Dr. Justice A.R. Rashmanan. Justice Rashmanan was an embodiment of great virtues that a human being could possess. He had humanness. He always treated fellow human beings as equal. He was a great author. He had written several books in English and Tamil. He was a great speaker. He had addressed hundreds of meetings and conferences on law, religion, culture, economics, and finance. He was a great legal luminary, authored 137,000 judgments, which are quoted even today. He was a great philanthropist, helped countless number of people who were in distress. He was a great host 
hospitality was innate with him. My friendship and association with him spanned over 45 years. Till he became a judge of the Madras High Court, on 14 June 1990, we would meet every day. Those days were joyful. The Madras Bar Association was a witness to his jokes and did it which, which created a lot of laughter. The lunch hour would be an enjoyable time for all of us as Lachmanan would bring scrumptious and tasty food from home and all of us would get our share. After he became a judge, we used to meet at functions and sometimes he would invite us for dinner at his residence. When I was when he was practicing, we went to many places to attend various functions. Just as Amnagaru mentioned about his 60th birthday, all of us friends from Madras, Gandhi, Maslamani, Jairis, and myself, we all went to 60th. Not only his 60th birthday, all the marriages of his children, his father and uncle's 60th birthday. 80th birthday, all the functions we attended. And he used to go together to Masonic meetings, law conferences, etc., throughout the country. One memorable trip was our journey to Bombay. There was a national convention of the intelligentsia at Bombay for two days, 22nd and 23rd August 1981. A special train had been arranged for us as we took 500 advocates from Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry. We left on 20th August and returned on 24th August. Lashmanan, Raju, Jagdeesan, Gandhi, Matsalamani, and I led the advocates. Those four days were memorable days as Lashmanan was cracking joke after joke during our journey. We did not feel the tediousness. On 9th June 1997, I celebrated the marriage of my daughter at my native place, Malre. Lashmanan came one day earlier and was there for all the ceremonies connected with the marriage. Dr. C. Rangarajan, then governor of the Reserve Bank of India, came for the marriage as he was co-brother of my Samandi, that is my son-in-law's father. I introduced him to Lakshmana. In two days, they became very friendly. I never imagined that we would be meeting again together on a happy occasion. The occasion being when Justice Lakshmana was transferred to APS Chief Justice in 2001. Sri Chandra Babu Naidu, then Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, specifically requested the then Prime Minister to appoint Dr. Rangarajan as Governor of Andhra Pradesh, as Sri Naidu wanted his advice on the economic reforms which he wanted to introduce in his state. Dr. Rangarajan was appointed as Governor of Andhra Pradesh in 1997. For the swearing-in of Lakshmanan in 2001, my wife and I went to Hyderabad. Lakshmanan remarked that he, when he met Dr. Rangarajan at Madurai in 97, during my daughter's wedding, he never imagined that Dr. Rangarajan would one day administer the vote of office to him as Chief Justice. During the function, Dr. Rangarajan introduced me to Sri Chandrabhav Naidu as his Samandi. Naidu had already invited Lakshmanan and Archie for tea at his residence. After our introduction, he invited me and my wife also for tea. We accompanied Lakshmanan and Dachi and spent almost two hours with Chandra Babu Naidu and his family. A hilarious thing took place. As usual, Lakshman was in his usual form of joy and he tried to pull my legs. He told Naidu, Ravindran is Manavadu, he may be related to you. Naidu was perplexed. Because only a few hours earlier, Dr. Rangarajan Governor has introduced me as his Samandi. Naidu knew Rangarajan was a Brahmin Ayangar. How Ayangar could become a Kaman Naidu within a few hours, he was perplexed. Then he explained to Naidu that my son-in-law was an Ayangar, and through my son-in-law, I am related to Dr. Rangarajan. Next day, Dr. Rangarajan had invited us for lunch at the Raj Bhavan. We spent three memorable days in the company of Lakshmanan and Dachi at Hyderabad. It was a God-sent opportunity for me to have spent valuable time with the three stalwarts who made their indelible mark in the respective fields of activity. We all felt sad on 3rd December 1997 when we heard the news that Lakshmanan was transferred to Kerala. On the day he left for Kerala by train, 
there was a huge crowd at the central station. His colleagues in the bench, senior advocates, advocates, friends and relatives. Almost 200 members of the High Court and subordinate court staff were there. When the train was about to leave, they all wept saying who was there to help them hereafter. Lakshmanan had secured admission for the children in educational institutions, secured jobs for the children, and uh, got assistance for medical treatment to several members of their families. Wherever he was posted, there would be a minimum of 10 or 12 people every day for lunch or dinner at his residence. When he was in Delhi, we, 20 advocates from Madras, attended a law conference. He addressed the conference. On seeing us, he came to us and asked about our welfare and our program. Then he invited us for dinner. When we said that why should we trouble him as they, there were 20 members, he said that if he left Delhi without having food with him, he would feel sorry. Then all of us went to his residence and had dinner and spent almost two hours with him. On 1st and 2nd of 84, 1994, a high-level U.S. delegation visited India. It consisted of, consisted of U.S. Supreme Court judges Antonin Scalia and Ruth Bader Ginsburg and four federal court, appeal judges, federal court of appeal judges, lawyers and family members, totaling 20. I was the president of the Bar Association then. For two days, there were several functions, including a seminar on human rights protection in India. When all of them vacated their rooms in Hotel Trident and came to the airport to airplane for Calcutta, the Indian Airlines announced the cancellation of flight at 11 p.m. in the night. The U.S. Consul General and I were there to bid them farewell. When we contacted the hotel, they said all rooms were full. I did not know what to do. I rang up Justice Rashmanan and told him our predicament. He asked me to wait for 10 minutes. Within 10 minutes, he called me and told me that he had made arrangements for judges, that is, two Supreme Court judges and Federal Court of Appeal judges, to stay in Park Sharipan through Haibullah Basha. For others, he had made arrangements at the guest house of M.A.M. Ramasamy. It was a big relief for me. Only Lakshmanan could make such arrangements within 10 minutes. I cannot reconcile with the fact that he is no more. When I am narrating these incidents, I hear the voice of Lakshmanan calling me with my full name, Ravindran. I miss him very much. I can go on narrating several incidents and anecdotes. For want of time, I refrain from doing so. I associate myself with all of you to offer our condolences to the family members of Justice Rashmana. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for sharing your uh, uh, wonderful thoughts to the Dr. Yair Now, I thank Yair Sundaresh and Senior Dragon President of Mandras Bar Association to give his response. Respected Honorable Justice N.V. Ramana, Judge Supreme Court. Respected Honorable Justice Vinit Kotari, Pitamaha of the Bar, Sri K. Parasaran, former Attorney General, Sri M. Ravindran, Senior Advocate, Honorable Judges, Respected Seniors, my dear friends. I thank Madras Bar Association for having convened this condolence meeting to think about our departed father and mother. I thank Honorable Justice N.V. Ramana, Judge Supreme Court, for having spared time and participating in this function and for the nice words spoken by the Honorable Judge. Honorable Judge said, Justice Lakshmanan need not be remembered by anyone because they will remain in the memory always. Thank you so much, my lords. I thank Honorable Justice Vinit Kotari J for having enlightened about the hospitality which father and mother as a couple have always been sharing with the friends 
and members of the bar. Thank you. Thank you, my lords. I thank Sri K. Parasaran for having enlightened us about the grassroots from where father had come, the status of Devakote at that point of time, and how the panchayats and other things have been inculcated in father, and the association between the family of Sri K. Parasaran and our family. Thank you, sir. I thank Sri M. Ravindran, senior advocate, one of the closest friends of my father for having spoken about the association and the friendship which he always shared with numerous friends. I thank all. And uh, uh, I can only say that as Justice Envi Ramana said, all of us will keep father and mother in our memory and we will think about them as if they are still with us and they will guide us. Thank you very much. And on this occasion, I only take this opportunity to offer condolence to the family members of numerous persons who would have lost their kith and kin during the period of COVID and this lockdown. Let all the souls attain Atma Shanti. Thank you very much. Thank you, President. In the honor of the departed soul, we request members to observe two minutes silence. So I call for the end of the meeting. Thank you.